what could be more terrifying than a wild African safari? If you can think of nothing, boy, you're in for a surprise. A similar safari, but only a few thousand to millions of years ago, would have given you a heart attack on the spot. And trust me, that would have been the good way to go. Africa already has a lot of the world's deadliest animals to its name. From 5,000-pound rhinos and the largest African lions to Nile crocodiles that kill over 3,000 people a year, it's not exactly a chill spot. Not to mention the sneaky killers like the tsetse fly, which causes African sleeping sickness. And of course, the infamous mosquito, known for being just as dangerous as it is annoying. The final nail in the coffin, though, is the black mamba, whose single bite has enough venom to kill 12 grown men within an hour. If that's what Africa looks like right now, just imagine what it would have been at a time when dinosaurs were the most normal thing out there. The good news is you don't need to, because we'll take you on a personal trip through prehistoric Africa, at your own risk, of course. So let's start with quite possibly the most unique creature on the list. I have to warn you before we start, this might make you fear frogs. And if you don't already, then you just haven't heard of the devil frog. Bezel Bufo, often called the devil frog, or frog from hell, was a monstrous amphibian that prowled ancient Madagascar during the late Cretaceous period, around 66 to 70 million years ago. And yes, we are talking about a frog, but just one on a pretty high dose of steroids. This colossal frog, reaching lengths of up to 16 inches or 41 centimeters and weighing about 10 pounds or 4.5 kilograms, was a true giant among its amphibian kin. But the most striking feature of Bezel Bufo was its massive head, adorned with a prominent cranial shield that likely provided protection and possibly served as a display structure. The bones of its skull bore a wrinkled outer surface, meaning it could have had bony scales or scutes, as if it wasn't already intimidating. However, inside this somewhat beautiful head were the gates of hell themselves. With its expansive mouth and extremely powerful jaws, Bezel Bufo likely boasted an impressive bite force, estimated to be between 500 to 2,200 newtons. This means Bezel Bufo was extremely well equipped to tackle large prey, including lizards, small vertebrates, and even hatchling dinosaurs. Still, Bezel Bufo was just a frog in the end, even if it ate dinosaurs. What really could have made you cry, though, was this hyena was not your average hyena that feeds off of other predators' scraps. Pachycrasuto, also known as the giant hyena or short-faced hyena, was a very formidable predator that roamed Africa and Eurasia around 1.5 million years ago. Think of a modern hyena but just much larger and much scarier. Standing at about 41 inches or 105 centimeters tall at the shoulder and measuring around 5.5 feet or 1.7 meters in length, with a weight of up to 286 pounds or 130 kilograms, Pachycrasuta was truly a giant among hyenas. But even deadlier than its size were its powerful jaws and sharp teeth, capable of effortlessly crushing bones. This adaptation allowed the giant hyena to prey on animals such as antelopes, zebras, and even early humans. However, despite its size, Pachycrasuta was simply not built for chasing prey over long distances. Instead, it likely relied on its strength and formidable bite force to overpower its prey. That makes it all the more horrifying, because it'd have used any opportunity available and sprung up on you in a second. While you might have a chance against the modern hyena, you couldn't have survived Pachycrasuta's first bite. Still, the Pachycrasuta did have this one weakness, and now that you know about it, maybe you'd be better suited at surviving the… I take back what I said. Because once you hear what this beast preyed on, you'll kiss all chances of survival goodbye. Inostracevia was a terrifying predator from the late Permian period, with total body lengths reaching up to 11.5 feet or 3.5 meters, and towering over its prey with long narrow skulls measuring up to 24 inches or 60 centimeters in length, and its weight did not disappoint either. Weighing in at around 550 pounds or 250 kilograms, this beast was the largest Gorgonopsian known to have ever existed. But what made Inostrin Sevia truly fearsome were its powerful jaws and long saber-like canines, with some reaching up to 6 inches or 15 centimeters in length. And you can bet they weren't just for show, they were perfectly adapted for holding and tearing the skin of their prey. 
with a jaw capable of a massive gape, Inostrin sevia likely delivered lethal bites to its victims, similar to the theoretical killing technique of the saber-toothed cats. Living in the late Permian period, Inostrin sevia shared its habitat with and preyed on creatures like Scutosaurus, a 2,560-pound or 1,160-kilogram 1 armored reptile. Regardless, it probably would have needed such extreme hunting skills against humans because they would have just been paralyzed in horror at the strange sight of this creature. Still, it definitely couldn't have confused them more than the... I'll give it to you straight. This is just a badger, or at least one of its early ancestors. But it didn't quite match the size of the mustelids we have today. Ecorus ekakaran was a mustelid from the late Miocene Kenya, which stood out with its imposing stature, reaching heights of 24 inches or 60 centimeters at the shoulders and weighing over 100 pounds or 45 kilograms. This made it comparable in size to a wolf, towering over its modern relative, the honey badger. And unlike typical modern mustelids, Ecorus had a unique build resembling that of leopards, with long legs built for swift running, rather than the short bursts of speed seen in smaller weasels. With its feeled-like tooth pattern and strong runner's elbow, this badger was actually a hypercarnivore, specializing in hunting down prey with speed and precision. Its hunting strategy likely involved stalking and chasing down larger animals, such as the three-toed horse, Eurynathohippus, and the formidable large pig, Nine Zacharus. A badger feasting on a horse? I bet that's a first for you. You know what won't be a first though? A cat terrorizing humans. So up next, we have, also called the false saber-toothed cat or terrible cat. This so-called cat prowled the ancient landscapes of Africa and Eurasia around 5 million years ago. Now, with a body weight of up to 200 pounds or 90 kilograms, a length of 5 feet or 1.5 meters, and a height of 31 inches or 80 centimeters, it wasn't the biggest of cats, but its haunting teeth more than made up for it. See, unlike today's big cats, Dinophilus stood out with its enlarged front canines, though not as large as those of true saber-toothed cats like Smilodon. These dagger-like teeth, combined with its robust body, made Dinophilus a formidable predator, capable of taking down prey much larger than itself. Its hunting style, similar to that of the modern leopard, relied on stealth and speed to ambush unsuspecting victims, including zebras and even early humans. In fact, Dinophilus's notoriety comes from its long association with hunting and eating early hominids, like Homo habilis and Australopithecus afarensis, meaning it might just have been one of the first predators to terrorize our kind. This has been proved by the Dinophilus remains found near the Paranthropus fossil skulls in South Africa, a few of which have peculiar twin holes in their skulls, matching the Dinophilus upper canine's spacing almost exactly. So yeah, it didn't just eat humans, it pierced their skulls. And with its immense strength, Dinophilus hunted other larger animals as well, including mammoth calves and young and old mastodons. But I guess hunting ape-like humans isn't that big of an achievement. However, this next animal could have easily taken on even today's humongous humans. Better practice its name, because this ancient beast will go on your list of coolest prehistoric animals ever. Simba Kubwa Kuto Africa, the great lion from Africa, roamed the earth during the early Miocene, around 23 million years ago, in what is now Kenya. This extinct mammal belonged to the family Hyenaloridae and was a true giant of its time, possibly surpassing even the modern polar bear in size. With a length of up to 12 feet or 3.8 meters and standing at an impressive height of 51 inches or 130 centimeters at the shoulder, Simba Kubwa could have weighed up to 2,200 pounds or 1,000 kilograms, making it a true behemoth in its ancient habitat. But despite its name, which translates to big lion in Swahili, Simba Kubwa was not related to modern lions, but was instead a member of a group of extinct mammals called hyenodonts. And you guessed it, these creatures weren't any less than the lions. With their formidable bone-crushing jaws and specialized teeth, hyenodonts were among the dominant predators of their time, preying on creatures such as rhinos and early proboscideans like mastodons. But considering its massive weight, which seems more like a burden, how exactly did Simba Kubwa take on these giants? Well, one of the most striking features of Simba Kubwa was its powerful bite. 
facilitated by its unique skull structure and specialized teeth. Unlike modern carnivores, which typically have one pair of meat slicing teeth, Simba Kubwa had three pairs. Safe to say, this beast had slicing blades for teeth. This allowed it to easily crush bones and take down large prey. Just imagine how scarier it could have been if it were an actual lion. While there's no way to find out, you can kinda guess how it'd have been as a tiger from… Remember Diego, the saber-toothed tiger from Ice Age? This tiger might resemble him in size, but it was definitely much scarier. Macarodus, also commonly known as the saber-toothed tiger, terrorized three continents, including Africa, Eurasia, and North America around two million years ago. This beast resembled most modern lions or tigers in size, measuring about 6.5 feet or 2 meters in length, and stood only at 3 feet or 1 meter at the shoulder. But don't worry, because once you hear about its teeth, it won't seem so small. What truly set Macarodus apart were its iconic long, curved canine teeth, reaching up to a staggering 7 inches or 18 centimeters in length. With its narrow skull and relatively small orbits, Macarodus possessed a striking appearance, but it was its elongated canines that struck fear into the hearts of its prey. These canines, flattened from side to side but broad from front to back like the blade of a knife, were the perfect tools for delivering devastated killing bites. And, unlike other saber-toothed cats, Macarodus had teeth rooted firmly in its mouth, allowing it to comfortably fit its long canines while still maintaining effective hunting capabilities. But despite these deadly characteristics, Macarodus was an ambush predator, which again makes it even deadlier. Macarodus likely utilized its powerful jaws and long canines to swiftly dispatch its prey, particularly slower moving animals like horses and rhinoceroses. While these may not be A-tier prey, Macarodus still had to compete with much deadlier predators for these animals. In its open woodland habitat, Macarodus competed with massive predators like bears, bear dogs, and fellow Macarodons for food. And yes, I said bear dogs. If you're confused, stay tuned till the end of the video, cause we'll let you in on one of these fearsome creatures as well. For now though, you'll have to agree Macarodus was pretty unique, but it certainly didn't compare to… Think of a creature resembling the saber-toothed cat, Smilodon, but slightly smaller and yet just as deadly. That was Megantherion, a fearsome predator of the late Neocene to Pleistocene epochs, prowled the ancient landscapes of Africa, Eurasia, and North America. And when I say Megantherion was unique, I mean it. Megantherion stood at around 31 inches or 80 centimeters tall at the shoulder and measured about 4.6 feet or 1.4 meters in length weighing in at 265 pounds or 120 kilograms. Now, even though it looked like Smilodon, it was actually built like a robust jaguar, boasting stocky forelimbs and powerful neck muscles designed for delivering a devastating shearing bite. Its long, curved canines were its signature weapons, perfectly adapted for piercing the throats of its prey. With these formidable tools, Megantherion hunted large herbivores like antelopes and gazelles, using its agility and powerful limbs to leap onto their backs and deliver fatal bites to their neck. The craziest thing though is that despite its size, it was likely capable of climbing trees, giving it a huge advantage over its prey. There was literally no running away from this beast, and when it did catch up to its prey, at least it delivered a swift death. Using its long saber teeth, it'd deliver a precise throat bite, severing vital nerves and blood vessels ensuring a swift and efficient kill. If you're sitting unfazed, thinking it never got near humans anyway, I'll let you know it probably feasted on your ancestors. Yes, evidence suggests that Megantherion even interacted with early hominids, with a few poor fossils showing wounds inflicted by its saber teeth. I know it's not the best way to go, but trust me, those hominids would have begged for a Megantherion if they ever got caught in the jaws of Named after conservationist John Thorpe Jarnison, this extinct species of crocodile was a true titan of its time, potentially reaching lengths of up to 27 feet or 8 meters, making it the largest known true crocodile to have ever roamed the earth. I say true crocodile, cause there's something similar and yet far bigger and terrifying at the end of the video, so stay tuned till then. Coming back to this beast though, the skull alone was 33 inches 
or 84 centimeters long. This monstrous crocodile would have dwarfed its modern-day relatives, resembling a heavyset Nile crocodile, but with even bigger proportions. With its massive skull and powerful jaws, Crocodilus thorpjohnsoni was without a doubt the apex predator of its environment, ruling over a realm where early humans and other large animals were part of its potential prey base. Feeding on plentiful large prey, including humans, which may have fallen victim to its ambushes at watering holes, Crocodilus thorpjohnsoni likely played a terrifying role in the lives of our ancient ancestors. The absence of direct evidence, such as bite marks on human remains, speaks to the efficient and devastating feeding habits of this behemoth. This means that even though there's no direct evidence of them eating humans, the fact is that it probably would have swallowed stones to crush the bones in its stomach and pass everything out at the other end. This chilling fact just might make it hard for this next creature to top Thorbajan Sonai. But its confusing yet absolutely horrifying look might get the job done. So next on the list is, if you thought dogs were cute, you just haven't run into this one. And boy, you should be grateful. The bear dogs prowled the ancient landscapes during the late Miocene epoch, spanning from Eurasia. And yes, you should really take the name literally, because this creature resembled a mix between a bear and a dog, but with a much more terrifying demeanor. It definitely wasn't your average canine. The Amphicyon was a bone-crushing predator, weighing in at over 400 pounds, or 180 kilograms, measuring about 6 feet, or 1.8 meters in length, and standing tall at 40 inches, or 100 centimeters. Even that wasn't all there was to it. Amphicyon also had a robust build with a thick neck and powerful jaws. Its skull was designed to crush bone, and its teeth, sharp as daggers, were perfect for tearing through flesh. You know what the biggest advantage of having such teeth is? You can tear through and eat just about anything. So despite its formidable appearance, Amphicyon wasn't picky when it came to meals. It feasted on a variety of large mammals, including horses, deer, and antelopes. But let's be honest, you can't really be an apex predator until you have a very hard-to-get special diet. Luckily for that, you don't need to look further than Last on our list of saber-toothed predators is this fearsome creature from the Pleistocene era. I mean, just the unique appearance would have left you trembling in fear, because one of Homotherium's most striking features was the imbalance between its front and hind legs. With long front limbs like those of a modern hyena, this unique body shape, combined with its squat hind limbs, gave Homotherium a formidable appearance, more like a relentless hunter than a typical cat. Nicknamed the scimitar cat due to the shape of its teeth, Homotherium was built for one purpose, hunting. With its long curved canine teeth, it could deliver deadly bites to its prey, ranging from early Homo sapiens to massive woolly mammoths. While the exact hunting methods of Homotherium remain debated among scientists, it is believed that this predator may have hunted in packs, utilizing coordinated ambushes to take down large herbivores like bison and horses. But it wasn't just its hunting prowess that made Homotherium a nightmare. This powerful and agile predator could reach weights of up to 550 pounds, or 250 kilograms, and stand over 4 feet, or 1.15 meters tall at the shoulder, making it a formidable force on the prehistoric savannas of Africa. Its strong forelimbs and highly efficient respiratory system allowed it to run at high speeds for short distances, enabling it to chase down prey and deliver a fatal bite straight to the throat. So it might seem like Homotherium could have taken on anything, but trust me when I say it's lucky it didn't run into the already extinct. If there's one animal that would have given Homotherium second thoughts, it's this one. Agriotherium, often dubbed the sickle-toothed bear, was a bone-crushing nightmare, horrifying every living soul in South Africa around 10 million years ago. To put it simply, Agriotherium was almost a small car on four legs, it boasted an impressive size that rivals even today's largest bears, a massive body stretching up to 9 feet, or 2.7 meters in length, 5.5 feet, or 1.65 meters in height, and weighing a shocking 1,980 pounds, or 900 kilograms. But what truly set Agrotherium apart were its unique features. Unlike its bear cousins, it had longer legs and a more compact face, giving it a sleeker, more agile build. Its wide, short jaws packed an incredible bite force, 
capable of even crushing bone with ease. With a bite force of 4,500 Newton, it might just have had the strongest bite force out of all the mammals of its time. These adaptations made Agriotherium a masterful hunter, and with a body mass greater than most large undulates, including horses, bovines, camelids, and rhinoceroses, it's likely that Agriotherium could have preyed on these as well. However, it was still a bear, and in the end, an omnivore. So chances are, if this beast was in the mood for berries, you probably would have escaped with your life. With this next animal, you couldn't even have thought of running away, since you'd be paralyzed in fear. Lastly, think of a creature so terrifying, it even makes some dinosaurs, including the T-Rex, seem tame by comparison. That was Sarcosuchus imperator, a crocodile-like reptile also called the colossal supercroc of the Cretaceous period. This ancient predator, thankfully extinct, truly ruled the rivers of Africa over 113 million years ago. Now, I'm not saying it measured up to the T-Rex in size, although it was quite huge, measuring over 40 feet or 12 meters long, with the skull alone being 6 feet or 1.8 meters and weighing over 16,000 pounds or 8 tons. But you'll see in a second how exactly it was more than a T-Rex. See, size wasn't the only thing that set Sarcosuchus apart. Armed with a terrifying set of backward-pointing teeth, this aquatic beast was built to take down prey much larger than itself. So it's not surprising that it had a very powerful bite force, possibly up to nine tons, far exceeding any modern-day crocodile, and is one of the most powerful bite forces on Earth. This bite force even exceeds that of T-Rex, that's why it's also probable that dinosaurs may have been on its menu, and the credit doesn't go to its teeth alone. Its hunting technique likely involved latching onto unsuspecting victims, dragging them into the water to be drowned. Living in vast river systems across Africa and South America, Sarcosuchus shared its watery domain with a myriad of ancient creatures, from coelacanths to dinosaurs like Ludosaurus and Uranosaurus, all of which likely fell to its bite. In the end, one thing is clear, even if you get a time machine, there's no way you could land up in a safe Africa. Any year you end up in, you'll be getting chills down your spine as soon as you step out, because prehistoric Africa at every point was pure nightmare fuel. And that's a wrap. Which one of these extinct animals makes you thankful for its extinction? The dinosaur gobbling Sarasuchus or the bone-crushing bear dog? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoy learning about ancient creatures, make sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more cool stuff about the past.